guys and today i am yeah just joking um i'm listening to horror stories now these are the exact same that multiversal jack uploaded i didn't watch it but i'm actually pretty scared of horror stories now let's not talk that much and let's get into it oh, oh this is gonna be the most creepiest 10 minutes of my life i hate horror stories My cousin Tyler and I used to have sleepovers all the time. Okay. Always you at did? his house, though, because he had the cool house. Back then, before cell phones and modern video games, kids actually used to do normal kid things. Like, for example, we both loved to play hide and seek at night. Oh, who does it? Both our parents were going out there in Atlantic City. Uh, so they had my uh, other cousin, I don't Tyler's like it. older brother, Joe, keep watching. It's not nighttime right An now, hour guys. Into the night, however, Joe told both of us he was going out and not to see Tyler and Joe would commonly do this because it mutually benefited them. Tyler uh -oh. loved having the house to himself, and Joe hated staying home all night. By the time he left, it was already a little later in the night. Like, you know, I don't like this. We had our dinner and decided it would be a good idea to play hide and seek. It, it's not a good idea, though. The house was honestly massive, so it was always a lot of fun. I was hiding first. Oh god. He started in the basement where Tyler was. Why would you start in the basement? Room that we use any house okay, stop. Okay guys, just here, start picturing this picture. When you go and have play hide and seek in the night, why why do you go to the basement? Maybe maybe they're just not afraid. Oh. A reason for this was because it just made it cooler. Oh, cooler. I tiptoed up the stairs, cooler. then up the next flight of stairs to the upstairs of the house. I don't like this. Jack, how'd you do this? The had a whole other living area, along with three bedrooms. I chose to hide in one of the unused bedrooms. I buried myself between two big beanbag chairs and a blanket. I left the door open to avoid any suspicions. I heard creaking coming into the room. Lively footsteps. Tyler was now moving around the carpeted room. I could hear him. He went over to the closet and opened it. Then he opened the second closet. Oh. Silence. Then he walked over to the other side of the room. And he started opening the drawers to the desk, rummaging through them. Suddenly, I heard Tyler's young, innocent voice calling my name up the stairs in a kind of mocking tone to try and scare me. My mouth opened and literally started twitching when I put two and two together. Oh God! There's someone I lifted in the room. The blanket slightly over my head to see what he was doing, but it wasn't Tyler. I knew right away based off the person's height. It was a much taller, fully grown man. Oh God! It wasn't Joe. It wasn't his dad. Uh-uh, 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 I don't like it. He perked it. up like a statue when he heard Tyler's voice, and I saw him duck into the corner of the room, behind the small piece of wall that sticks out there. Tyler entered the room with his black hair and kept saying my name over and over, slow and drawn out like. Uh-uh, no. I was praying his light would not reach over to the corner of the room. His light landed on me under the blanket. He may not have even seen me, but I still willingly came out and acted all defeated, fake laughing and everything. I told him he won, put my arm around his back, and started nudging him out of the room. Oh, God, I kept the conversation as natural as possible, until we were halfway down the stairs. That's when I dropped the bomb and told him there was someone in there with me, and nudged him to run outside. Being the scared nine-year-old we were, all we could do was run next door and ask the woman living there to call the police for us. She did without hesitation. I still remember the scene vividly, of the cops pulling up, running into the house, and five minutes later, ushering a guy out in cuffs. It was a great feeling, even as a nine-year-old. Oh god, is that it? That, okay, that wasn't that creepy, it was just a guy. Usually that's what these stories are about. One time I had a sleepover with my friend Mike on a cloudy dark night. Uh, it's always there was a slight drizzle uh, and occasional lightning. We were 13 years old. Okay, Mike yeah. lived on a dead end with one other house next to it. Across the street was a field surrounded by trees, and his backyard led to a forest. Mike and my, I were up my face much right after now. his dad went to sleep. 
His dad's room was all the way upstairs. Mike's room was on the lower level of the house by the den. So the den was where we would hang out mostly to just play GameCube. Oh, I love GameCube. Oh, guys, you, it, if you guys remember GameCube, say that in the comments. I miss it. Oh, Luigi's Mansion, and oh, uh, just, okay, just get back to the show. Okay. Look <laughs> out. The light was shut, so we couldn't see outside. Mike ran to go open the blinds. I told him not to, but he did anyway. As he did, I shut off the TV and lamps because I didn't want to be seen. Now that it was dark in the den and slightly brighter outside, we could slightly see outside and see that there was nothing but grass in the visible distance. A small flash of lightning confirmed that there was nothing but wet grass in all directions. We sat in the den with the lights off for a while, just waiting for something else to happen. We kept our eyes on the window, expecting somebody to come up to it. Okay, it's halfway done. Eventually, after what felt like forever later, we turned the TV and lamp back on and pretended it didn't happen. The blinds were open this time, and every so often I'd take nervous glances at the window, just making sure nobody was out there. After getting so absorbed in the game and forgetting to take a glance at the window, there was the second set of knocks. Mike and I both jumped up and looked at each other. With all the lights on, we couldn't really see outside. At least, not until the flash of lightning outside, just for a brief moment, lit up the night sky, long enough to show the person who was standing at the window. This time, we ran upstairs to Mike's dad's room and pulled him out of bed, screaming at him to get up. The three of us ran out to the backyard in our coats and shoes, turning the backyard light on, on the way, and also taking along flashlights. Oh, I like this much better. There was a buildup of mud next to the back wall of the house where the dirt patches were. And the puddles of mud were heavy, distinct footprints of boots. We followed the footprints you know, this guy is very foot, descriptive. the mud faded away, so did the footprints. We searched high and low for anybody. Front and then out into the woods. Don't go. Is it over? Is this story? We all went to sleep. Oh no. I couldn't sleep well. I was terrified. Of course, the blinds were shut to the window and back door now. Just as I was anticipating, there was a third set of blocks at exactly 12.15. I remember that number. Me and Mike both jumped from the couches and ran upstairs to his dad's room once again. This time he ran outside alone and told us to call the cops. He returned soaking wet, having found nobody. The cops came for nothing because there was really nothing they could do. The knocking didn't happen again though, and I also never slept over Mike's house again. Ever since that day, his den just always gave me the creeps. Okay, okay, that wasn't that terrifying. See, the problem is, the thing that creeps me out the most is not the stories. It's the thing that, that, that I'll think that actually that will happen. And that creeps me out the most. Ooh. I used to be close friends with a kid named Chris. He moved away across the state when I was eight. Uh, Since we never got to see each other anymore, I got my mom to agree to drive me all the way over to Chris's new house in the country for a weekend sleepover. Going onto his property, I already knew this was the perfect place to do anything outdoorsy. It was a decent sized house with nothing but woods in all directions. The first day we didn't do much because I got there late anyway, so we just talked for a while and watched the movie. A couple of times I think that I was hearing sounds coming from below the floor. I would ask him, do you have a basement? Is someone down there? Chris went on to tell me that there was no basement, and that his whole family had been hearing weird noises coming from down there for a few days, and they planned on having some inspector over to check it out. The next day was partly cloudy and warm, so we planned on spending most of the day outside. I convinced him to go for a walk in the woods just to explore. After all, this was all kind of new to him as well. Conveniently, there was an opening into the woods that almost seemed to have meant to be a path. Oh god. So as we These were aren't as creepy as I thought. Chris's foot hit something that made a metallic kind of thud sound. Thud. His foot hit a rusty old cellar door. He said he didn't know about this, neither did his dad. He bent down and pulled it open, and it made an ear-piercing squeal as the rusty door turned on the hinges. 
It was the definition of pitch black down there, but it seemed a ladder led down a very narrow tunnel. Neither of us dared to step foot down there. Suddenly, a sound echoed up the tunnel, like the sound of something dropping onto a hard floor. And then, metallic sounds echoing up the tunnel, getting closer. As soon as we realized it was the sound of somebody climbing up the ladder, we ran to get Chris's father, who was shocked to see what we had found. He called down there for anybody to come out, before calling a few of his buddies over to go down with him. Chris and I were forced to stay inside while the three of them went down there. <laughs> they came back out five minutes later, all of them visibly shaken and nervous. They came back inside and talked to Chris's mom in private. They never let either of us in on what they saw. Apparently cops showed up as well, but we were forced to stay in Chris's room so we couldn't watch any of it. In fact, it wasn't until I was 13 that Chris finally texted me one day, telling me what his dad really found down there. Three full body bags tucked away in a corner, an old cot, broken beer bottles everywhere, and the smell of freshly smoked pot. Chris told me that when we heard something down there, we probably heard whoever was living down there, and whoever was responsible for those dead bodies. Oh, just let that sink in your head for a sec. Oh. <laughs> okay, I survived. I didn't get too scared. Those weren't too scary. Cause Jack probably got a little less scared than I did. I mean, he is older than me, so yeah. You, I guess you can't can't really yell at me for this. Um, I mean, I I guess it, it, it was nice. Okay, if you guys enjoy, oops. Excuse me. If you guys enjoyed this creepy horror story filled episode of creepiness, oh, you must go down to the hey description below and yeah, what's up? Um, I'll be thinking about this in my dreams. I hit the like button, sub button, and do a little commenting about what I said. If you guys have a similar horror story or a horror story you want me to react. To send it to me or a, a chat story, anything horrified, I'll do. Uh, just don't make it something with jump scares in the pictures because I'm looking around my room now and I'm actually kind of scared. See you guys later.